So I'm going to start out with the first. Bing. Salaki. I'm going to start out with the first P and A. Uh, Those who hear the word but don't understand. This is James chapter 1 and verse 21. I started verse 19. I started verse 17. It reads, Uh, Every good gift and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, the Father of spirits being Yahweh through his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, through the Rakakwadash being the Holy Spirit. He whom there is no variation or shadow of turning of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures, representing the elect. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce righteousness of Yahweh. And you have some people who might, um, who might hear, get frustrated and just put it off and neglect it. And, and you know, that's where you get that saying, I, hey, everybody believes in what he believes in. They don't take time out to hear the breakdown of our people, uh, uh, of the, the, of, um, I was, I'll just say the love story, you know, for, of our people coming from Israel and Jerusalem being, being, uh, sold to all these other nations and how we got to America. Instead, they think that we come from the motherland or they think that everybody comes from from uh uh lord knows what but they're on that they're on that everybody is equal doctrine you know they just take the easy way out and they don't got time to hear how the lord has provided a way for us to receive a comforter for us to receive a a a, a um a, a a hope of salvation for us to be able to receive the truth and and it persevere it be able to to make it this far and we have uh uh uh, a comforter, you know, I'll, I'll simply put it that way. I don't want to get too deep in it and, and start trying to figure out the perfect words to say. Sometimes the, the least amount of words is the best way. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. That's one of the first steps. You know, when you hear this word first, when you hear this word, be slow, slow to slow to talk, swift to listen, you know. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness, humility, the implanted word, which is able to save your soul. Our Lord tells us, and that's the beautiful part about it. That's the love story. That's the love story. Our Lord tells us in first Timothy chapter five, chapter four and verse 15, meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. Some men might not be ready to do that, you know, especially when they hear it. And first thing they do is, oh, he coming with, he coming. I didn't heard this before. He coming with all types of, 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 of trying to get me involved in some type of organization or trying to, uh, get me involved in a, in a, in a, uh, like a, uh, man, like a, uh, uh, like a, yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about, but trying to when they go around trying to recruit, they think it's something that you go around trying to recruit people with. This ain't nothing where we go out and try to recruit. Our Lord tells us go to the highways and the byways and and let the gospel be preached. If they whether they rebel, whether they refuse or not, that doesn't stop us from going out to the highways and the byways and preaching the gospel. Take heed to yourselves and to the doctrine. Continue in them. 
for in doing so, for in doing this, you will save both yourselves and those who hear. So we realize the importance of us continuing in this doctrine, in, in the truth, and in, in continuing to plow. You know, we realize what we're involved in, but but brothers who 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 might just hear it and and shut it off, they they don't fully understand. They they can't see. And I pull up that point. I pull up that point next. Let's see. Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 11. The whole vision has become to you like the words of the book that is sealed, which men delivered to one who is literate, saying, read this, please. And he says, I cannot, for it is sealed, which represents when you go to those self-proclaimed leaders or those self-proclaimed teachers or, or, or men who are, who are uh, uh, made to be as though they're renowned. You know, you ask them about a specific verse or a specific book, and they say that it's sealed. They say they, they uh, uh, those things haven't happened, or they say that... Uh, we're not in Bible times no more. Or they say the New Te the Old Testament is done away with. They give you all types of excuses to let you know that they don't understand. Then the book is delivered to one who is illiterate, saying, Read this, please. And he says, I am not literate. Therefore, the Lord says, Inasmuch as these people draw near with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but have removed their hearts far from me, meaning you're uh when you set your heart on something, that means that that's a, that you got tunnel vision. That means that uh, that means that um, your your mind is singular upon that one thing. Most people don't even see the times we're in, you know, and most people don't realize that, uh, that the scripture was made for them, as far as Israelites go. You know, most people don't understand uh, uh that the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Seminole Native Indians are the chosen children of the Lord. You know, they're still stuck under that. Everybody is equal. Love everybody. Uh, uh, they're still stuck under uh, certain uh, Babylon juice that's been pushed out to the people. They can't fully comprehend it, which is why our Lord tells us when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches it, snatches away what has so what was sown in their heart, what, what was sown in his heart. This is he who receives the seed by the wayside. And as much as these people draw near with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but have removed their hearts far from me, meaning their mind isn't set on pleasing the heavenly father and his only begotten son. Their mind is set on, on, uh, whatever type of community thing or whatever type of, of, of thing they got going on at home, whatever, whatever is of the world. And their fear towards me is taught by the commandment of men. And that's something we see a lot in the churches. They claim that the Lord loves everybody, that, that our, our Lord uh, forgave us for our sins, uh, which he did forgive the nation of Israel. But he gave um, our, our Lord mediator as that perfect sacrifice, that unblemished land for us to be able to ask for forgiveness. So, so in order to receive forgiveness of sins, you have to change. You have to um you have to show that you want to be forgiven. And our Lord tells us. Because we know that the Lord is going to redeem one third of the nation of Israel first. Being the hopefully let the hundred. Shall I could be in the hundred and forty four thousand. And the one third. Along with that. And I'll get that in. Uh. As our Lord tells us, uh, this is what people don't understand. The Lord gave us a place of repentance. So you got a lot of people who think that the Lord is just going to uh, let you live how you want and take you back. You filled with all types of filth, all types of dirty food, all types of, of rebellious attitudes and you think that everything is just going to be cool 
when you didn't done Lord knows what and ain't even tried to clean yourself up. And that ain't, you know, I'm, I'm speaking mainly towards the, the, those that, that are stuck under that Babylon juice. I'm trying to get that. Amen. Shalakia, Hosea. This is Hosea chapter 5 and verse 15. And I bring this out a lot because it goes into you recognizing your offense. It reads, I will return again to my place till they acknowledge their offense. Then they will seek my face. In their affliction, they will earnestly seek me. So that goes into doing things that are pleasing to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. For Him to be able to, to uh, uh, turn back to you and, and pay attention to you. If you're seeking His forgiveness, you have to do things worthy of Him forgiving you. Come, let us return to the Lord, for He has torn us. He has torn, but He will heal, he will heal us. He has stricken, but He will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third, he will raise us up that we may live in his sight. Let us know. Let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. So you don't just get it off of doing what you want. You have to pursue the knowledge of the Lord. You have to pursue what's going to be pleasing to the Most High to be able to please him. You don't just, uh, the brother had brought it out earlier. Uh, when if, if your woman does something that's displeasing to you, you and she come back to you with an attitude. You looking at her like, why are you even? You know what you just did, right? You're not looking at her like, dang, baby, I I ain't even tripping off you being with that other man out there. You know, no, you looking at her like, yo, you, you tripping? You gonna come back with that attitude after all the things you done done? That's how, that's how we should. That's the type of energy that that uh, Shalakia, um. Uh, so, so in this sense, in that same sense, we're that woman. Israel is that woman who did the Most High and His only begotten Son wrong, you know, by turning and worshiping false idols. So we're not coming back to the to to the Lord with the arrogant spirit, with the with the haughty spirit, with the prideful spirit. We're not coming back just thinking, "Oh, it's already set for me. I got it like that." Nah, you should be coming and seeking the Most High with the humble and contrite spirit. Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the la like the rain, like the latter and former rain to the earth, which represents knowledge of the things that happened before and the things that are happened are gonna happen in the future, the things that are happening now. So in us returning, we should be in a humble, contrite spirit. We shouldn't be in no haughty spirit thinking that we got it like that or thinking that we're just supposed to uh, get everything for giving nothing. This is 2nd Assessors chapter 9 and verse 7. It reads, And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed. So works going into change, you know, and faith going into trusting, that by you changing for the most high, by you following his word, that, you know, you're going to receive uh, uh, mercy. Ye shall be preserved from the said perils, perils, and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which have, which have abused my ways. And they have caught and they have cast them away despitefully, shall dwell in torments. For such as in their life received benefits and have not known me, and they that had loathed my law while they had yet liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not but despised it. So when you were, when when uh, somebody tells you, you gotta you gotta stop eating pork. You gotta stop eating lobster and crab. When when somebody tells you, 
you gotta uh, 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 stop sleeping with another man's woman. Stop looking at women out there as as uh, uh, as you know things you could just uh, uh, go and 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 stop looking at women like uh like you just got it like that. When somebody tells you that uh, to to come out of the ways that have been pushed on you, to to stop laying down and and waking up in a mentality as though uh, you don't gotta change. When somebody lets you know, hey, you got to clean yourself up because the Lord is getting ready to destroy this place. And you think, oh, the, the Lord already forgave us for our sins. We're good. But the Lord tells us that he, that he does not change, nor does his only begotten son change. So the things that were said in the book of Leviticus, the things that were said in the book of Deuteronomy, they still hold weight. The things that were said from the beginning are still in play. That represents somebody who received the word uh, on a stony in a in a stony place. Slakia. That represents somebody who doesn't understand when he receives the word. Okay, but now dropping down to verse twenty. But he who received the seed on stony places is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. So you might have brothers who may enter into the truth and start plowing and may start, you know, doing their due diligence. They might start a camp. They might, you know, uh, start doing their thing. You know, we've seen camps break, branch off from, from Great Millstone and start doing their own things and start uh, 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 making themselves known and, and start building a congregation. Yet he has no root in himself but endures only for a while, meaning you're not grounded within yourself. And part of that come, part of that goes into to integrity, um, integrity, uh, morals, um, and, and, and just trusting in the most high and, and having that solid foundation, being steadfast, meaning, hey, regardless of what happens, I'm going to constantly be praising the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, you know? And it, it and 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 staying uh uh staying uh diligent in what I've been taught before, not switching doctrines, not switching it up. As our Lord tells us, I'll, I'll pull up a couple scriptures. Uh, you got men who who uh, start out in the truth, and then they may see an opportunity. Titus chapter 2 and verse 6. Likewise, exhort the young men and be sober minded. Part of being sober minded, going back to uh, going back to this truth is not being uh, intoxicated with different doctrines or different beliefs. Being sober is knowing, OK, there's one way there's 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 you, you can't uh, uh, you, you can't lean on, on one side or the other. You can't go off and think that you could just say whatever you want and do whatever you want because that's going to have repercussions. So, and I'm not talking about in the world. I'm talking about with the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. So you can't offend. You can't uh, disrespect the elders that were that are before you. You can't uh, disrespect your teachers. You know, you got to be sober-minded and realize that you didn't come, you didn't start this thing off yourself. You didn't just come up with a bright idea. You know, somebody had to tell you and let you know or you had to come across it and sit and listen for it even to be unveiled to you. Having a sense of appreciation goes back into being sober minded. You know, you're not in this because you just you just that cool. 
you know, being sober-minded goes into being of a humble state, realizing, okay, at any point in time, the Heavenly Father, through His only begotten Son, could destroy me and judge me, and, 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 hey, it could be all bad at any point in my, in, in time, you know? Okay, so, you know, at first you might have heard the word and been like, okay, cool, you know, yeah, I want to start a camp, but then when, when you got off into your own, uh, into your own, uh, 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 place where you could start building for yourself, likewise exhort young men to be sober-minded in all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works. Somebody has to keep check on you for you to be able to, for, for you to be in a position to be able to say, okay, I know I got it. I know I'm, 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 I'm being diligent. Uh, which is where the elders and apostles and the men, uh, that have been, uh, uh, doing their due diligence in their stead, uh, you have to show appreciation for that. As our Lord tells us, judge those that are in the house. So you don't want to, you don't want to wake up one second and realize that you're out the house, you know? You don't want to wake up and realize, oh, I didn't been put out. Which is why the Lord says he shall come as a thief in the night. You know, a lot of men are going to wake up and start realizing, dang, I didn't, I didn't, I'm this far off. First Corinthians chapter five and verse 12. For what have I to do with judging those who, those also who are outside? Do you not judge those who are inside? But those who are outside, the most high judges, therefore put away from yourselves and the evil person. And, and the evil person represents what's inside. Because if what's inside isn't right, it's going to be exposed. It's going to be brought out eventually, which goes into you examining yourself before judgment. And then I wanted to get a... I was on Titus. And all things showing yourself to be a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing integrity. So when the camera shut off, when you go home, you know, when you start whatever, what you're doing at home, or uh, let's say it's, uh, let's say you might be having a conversation with somebody and then you may have a conversation with somebody else. You could, you've seen that in the world. I know you've seen that in the world happen where, where, where somebody goes and talks to somebody else somebody goes and talks to someone then when they go back to, to a different person it's a whole different story and you'll be looking like yo that's kind of that ain't really right you know that's that integrity and all things showing yourself to be a pattern of good works in doctrine showing integrity reverence respect being respective of your elders being respectful to your elders incorruptibility which goes into uh somebody not being able to to show up and and take away what was sown by the most high you know regardless of what those who are who are outside of the house regardless of what they say they're not going to be able to take away what the lord has given you as far as your talent you know the lord blessed each man with a specific talent and i'm gonna get into that because uh you know, in this thing of ours, you got the right hand side and the left hand side. So when we go out there, uh, we're not we're not technically recruits or nothing like that. But when 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 the truth is brought out, the 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 when the word is brought out, it'll pull in those who the who the Most High is calling. You know, so so the word itself, in a sense, is like a, a talent agent. You know, and and you know you could use your talent for good, but you also have those uh, talent agents on the left hand side, and they're looking at you like, yeah, I know he was good in school. I know he was good putting together puzzles, answering riddles. You know, he used to be the top of his class. You know, and they're looking at you as a so-called Negro saying that. So-called Latino or, or Seminole Native Indian saying that. I know he got brain smarts. I know he's a sharp cat. You know, he got street smarts, whatever the case may be. They're looking at you with those that same talent that the Lord blessed you with. And and, and they're, they're uh, already plotting in their mind how they could use it for evil. So, so when this truth is being brought out, you know, um, and, 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 and you might hear it, you might start to think, okay, well, hey, you know, 
I didn't uh, my I, I didn't heard my uncle bringing out scripture or my cousins used to be involved in what you guys are talking about. You might start to ponder on it like, OK, you know, uh, hey, and you might hear a couple scriptures and be like, OK, yeah, you know, that makes sense as, as far as how there might be. Uh, certain trials and tribulations in the world and how we might have to be on point and how they try to, to, to pull us away from our higher power. That makes sense. That's that in, in, uh, uh, Salakia. I'll continue to speak. Sound speech that cannot be condemned. That goes into be having that iron uh, uh, iron horn as far as uh, when you speak, you're not wishy-washy or you're not... You're not uh, Changing what it is you say, although we know that in this thing of ours, there may be men men who try to catch us up when we when we uh they may try to catch us up as far as context goes and say, well, oh, he said this, but they may try to use it out of context as far as specific words we say or as far as uh, uh the understanding of the scripture goes, they may try to use it against us and say, oh well, no, you, you know he said this or he said that when we're coming out of a sincere heart, you know. And those who hear and those who understand receive it with, uh, 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 they don't receive it with us coming from a de deceitful place. They receive it saying, okay, that brother is, is, you know, he's coming out of a sincere heart. They understand, you know, so those who hear the, hear and understand the truth, uh, receive the message and they say, okay, well, I, I, I understand what that brother's saying, but you also got those on the, on the left hand side who are trying to pull you out of the truth and, and, and have you, um, have you uh, uh, second guess yourself? Because the Lord tells us. Uh, hold on, Salaki, y'all. James chapter 1 and verse 6. And I'll start at verse 5 because this goes. I'll start at verse 4. I'll start at verse 2 because this encompasses what I was going into. My brethren, count it all joy. When you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but patience, Shalakia, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So, so you you know you may be uh, you may be um, starting out in this truth and and getting your your you may be getting your footing. And you may be people have people trying to, to, to hinder you, you know, we'll still be patient. You know, we realize that there, there's going to be those scoffers and those mockers and those people that that try to project their filth on you and try to project their hatred on you and try to 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 to, to pull you out of the truth and try to use your words against you. We realize that. If anyone of you, if any one of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of the most high. Who gives it to all liberally without reproach, and it will be given to him. So with that, you gotta understand that uh um, you know, every star has its different type of shine. As our Lord told Abraham, your descendants shall be stars of the sky, like the stars of the sky. Well, if we're considered the stars of the sky, every star has its different uh, uh shimmer to it. It has its different its own unique essence to it, you know. So you may have Men who may have a specific, uh, specific lessons that they may be working on, but it may not have been brought out. You know, other brothers may not have touched on it like that, and they may notice it, and they may just be holding it like, okay, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a kind of meditate on this and 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 keep this as far as one of those precious pearls. As our Lord tells us, cast not your pearls before swine. They, hey, brothers may be holding it like, okay, let me hold this as, as a pearl. You know, I don't want to cast this out like that. That may be wisdom that the Most High blessed them with. So the Most High, uh, you know, he, he he may bless specific brothers with different amounts of wisdom. But, you know, it may not be. Um, everybody may not be the same. So, you know, if you're blessed with a different amount of wisdom, you know, that's not to say that you should feel like uh, you should feel like, oh, I got to second guess myself because. This doesn't match up with what's being taught or, 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 or whatever the case may be. No, just meditate on it. Wait for it. Somebody might bring out a lesson and that may further edify and strengthen that uh, uh, that specific lesson that you had ready.